Welcome back. Today I have something new, and this is actually new to me. I just got off of Amazon the Roy Pow 30 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. This is a deep cycle battery, so this is great for motor homes, for solar setups, for trolling motors on boats, things where you're not charging and discharging it immediately all the time, where you will charge it up and you'll run it for a while before it's charged up again. One of the most interesting things about RoyPow is they're known for making lithium battery packs for electric golf carts. So you can convert your golf cart over to using modern electric car type batteries. They provide battery banks that cost thousands of dollars and have multiple different configurations and voltage for you. And these battery packs are kind of interesting. They could be used to either retrofit my Electra or to build another electric car. But today I have what looks like a normal automotive type battery in their same technology. When I first started playing around with my own automobiles over 20 years ago, the deep cycle battery that we went to was the Red Top Optima. And that's because this battery wouldn't overcharge, it wouldn't spill battery acid everywhere, it wouldn't ruin your battery trays. So if you had something that you cared about, you put a Red Top or a Yellow Top Optima battery in it depending on what kind of use it had. Lately, over the last few years, I've gotten really tired of regular batteries, and especially the Optima batteries, because if you were to drain one of these, it will completely ruin it, even from draining it once. There's basically no rescuing it and bringing it back to life to the way it was. And if you're using that in a car that parks all winter or you use it occasionally, it's really hard to keep up with making sure that these are not going to discharge, that you haven't accidentally left your lights on. They're just very, very fragile. So I've switched over to using ultra capacitors in a lot of my cars. And you can see this is very light, much lighter than the Optima battery. And I would say I have about a quarter of my cars converted over to ultra capacitors now. These are not the best batteries to use in every car, especially cars that might have a drain on them. But for old cars where when they're off, there is no current coming from the battery. I can park many of my cars all winter long. The Ultra Cap still has plenty of power to start it in the spring. And I never ever have to worry about my batteries because if you fully discharge one of these Ultra Caps, it doesn't care. Just charge it back up and you're good to go. Also, these charge very quickly, so you don't have to wait very long, even if you did discharge it completely. And that's why I'm really excited about these new technologies, because the batteries like this one might start to bridge the gap between the batteries that we've been using for a long time and the ultra capacitors, which don't have a whole lot of capacity. So first off, if we pick this up, you can see this is really light. It's not as light as this one that I can easily pick up off the counter with one hand. Yeah, I can pick it up, but it is quite a bit heavier than this. And obviously, picking this up, this is really heavy. So, it's a great size. This size, you can probably fit into any automobile you want to. It's not going to leak. I think if anything, you might have a problem with fires. Uh, not necessarily from the battery catching fire, but if you were to have an engine or a fuel fire and it got to this battery, I'm not sure what this thing's going to do. In the RC world, when you have LiPo batteries like this and they do catch on fire, they, they could be very dangerous if they catch on fire. Obviously, I'm not going to set this one on fire today and find out what happens. We'll just have to wait and see. But this technology seems to be very interesting. Now, this is where it gets a little weird because the specs that they give for this battery are not the specs that you would see conventionally on a battery or a power source. For example, this Yellow Top Optima battery can put out 870 amps, whereas this ultra capacitor is rated at 15,500 amps. But Roy Pow lists this battery as having a continuous charge current of 20 amps and a continuous discharge current of 30 amps. That is way, way, way smaller than any of these. I mean, the Optima battery is way, way, way smaller than the ultra cap. But still, this has 870 amps that it can put out, and this only has 30. The Yellow Top Optima battery rates its capacity in amp hours, and this has 55 amp hours. 
whereas the Roy POW has 30 amp hours. So it's a little less, but if the power is more consistent and feels like it's more powerful from the lithium battery, it may be okay that it doesn't have the capacitance of the yellow top. That we have certainly seen that with this ultra capacitor. This one doesn't give an amp hour rating. It has a watt hour rating of 16 watts. So if I take my calculator and I'll use 12.8 volts, that gives us a capacitance of 1.25 amp hours. And the amount of power that this can put out all at once is crazy. So it should let you start your engine, even though it can't store a whole lot of power. But what this ultra capacitor can do with so little power, because it can output basically all of the current that anything is requesting of it, you don't need a big capacitance in order to start virtually any engine with one of these. But again, we're talking about deep cycles, so we want to store as much energy as possible. I normally use a yellow top like this on my winch vehicles. I connect this up to the winch, have the alternator charge it, and the winch draws its power from something like this. The ultra capacitors are very good to use with solar setups because any amount of solar power that's coming in, it can store it immediately. You don't have a huge loss in waiting for a chemical reaction to happen where you're just throwing away a bunch of energy just because it can't take it as quickly as it's coming from the solar panels. So with an ultra capacitor, you can save all the energy that you're taking in from solar panels and reuse it. So when the sun's out, an ultra capacitor is a great choice for uses where maybe you would use a regular deep cycle battery. But the thing is, this is rated only at 20 amps of charging current and 30 amps of discharging current. I'm not sure those numbers are even correct. And I'm not sure how quickly you can charge a deep cycle Optima battery as well. I don't know if this can charge at a full 20 amps and not damage the battery in any way. When I'm charging a battery, I usually choose somewhere between 2 amps and 10 amps. So 20 amps seems very logical as a good solution to be using with solar panels. And that if this can quickly and consistently take 20 amps of power for charging, this might be a great setup. This battery might outperform the yellow top. So today I'd like to do a few tests with this battery, find out what it can and can't do. This battery does have a battery management system in it, just like all lithium battery packs have to. So when you apply a voltage to this, it uses its battery management system to make sure that all the cells are charging correctly. And it also has discharge protection built into it. So this battery will automatically protect itself from an under voltage. So once the voltage gets low enough, this battery will shut off and it will not let you drain it down completely. And that protects the battery something that I wish the Optima had, but it doesn't have. So you're not going to ruin it like you would the yellow top. I have it all charged up now. I only had one battery charger that actually has a lithium setting. Although I think you could charge this just fine with a regular battery charger because this does have its own battery management system built into so it. Let's bring the Roy Pal back here. And here's one of my cars that I have the ultra capacitor installed in. If you remember, this is from the video when I got three Sunbeam Tigers from a barn find in Minnesota. But before I install this, let's run a few tests with the ultra capacitor since it's already in there. For this test, I'm going to be using this old Snap-on battery tester. And it's going to show the current voltage of the battery and how many amps we're drawing from it. One thing it can do is it can put a load using this dial and I can actually dial it up and see the maximum amount of power that the battery can output. But first let's try a real world situation and just see if it can start the car. So I have the leads from the battery tester connected. I have the negative there, the positive there. And then this loop lets me see how much current is coming out of the battery to the car. Right now the capacitor is charged at 12.9 volts and we do not have any amps coming from the battery because there's nothing on the car that's on right now. 
Let's crank the engine and see the maximum current draw that the starter requires in order to turn the engine and start it. When I crank the engine, watch right here, this will be the amount of current that the starter is drawing to start the car up. It required well over 100 amps in order to turn the engine over. Let's put the Roy Pow in there and see if it can even crank the engine, considering it says it has a maximum output of only 30 amps. Now I had the Roy Pow just setting in there and it is hooked up. We have 13.2 volts from it. Let's try to start it and see if it can start the car. We can also watch and see how many amps the battery can really output. Okay, so this unit obviously has an overload protection built into it. It was not able to output enough current in order to start the engine. Hopefully there's a circuit breaker in there and it will turn back on at some point. Obviously it hasn't yet. Maybe I need to put a charger on it in order to get it to turn back on. So I'll get this connected and if it's not turned back on by the time I have it disconnected, we'll take it over to a charger and connect it up and see what happens. I have it over on the bench now. Let's see if it has turned back on yet or not. Looks like it has. So we have 13.3 volts coming back out of it. So it must have a circuit breaker and it has turned itself back on. Well, that was not at all what I expected to happen. Let's hook the tester up again, but let's hook it straight to the battery. Now let's see how much current the battery can actually output. So let's really slowly turn it up. We'll see at what current it stops at. Okay, this is pretty touchy. There we've got 30 amps. So it is able to handle 30 amps. Let's go a little further. 66 amps. Still going. We've dropped down to 10 volts, so okay. We went just over 80 there, and then it turned itself off. So we know that instantaneous discharge current can be well over 30 amps. It appeared it could be as high as even 70 or 80 amps. Let's see if it can detect if something was hooked up, whether this is a time thing. Yeah. So it knows when you've disconnected your load again and it has turned itself back on now. So it's not a time-based thing. It's just detecting whether or not you're still connected to it or not. And we're still at 13.1 volts at the battery. Well, this has been quite interesting. This is a pretty weird product. And I printed off here from their website that you can pair these in with four of them in series or two of them in parallel. So it looks like they're wanting you to limit your current output to about 60 amps. And so they're saying that you can only put two of these in parallel because, well, they're gonna shut off if you try to draw too much current from them. When I first saw the ad for this thing, what I was actually expecting was basically a bigger version of these jump packs because these do use the same type of batteries that this uses. So I figured that this would just be a big jump pack that you could mount in your car, but obviously that's not what it is. So on its own, this battery is not going to do a whole lot and you can't pair it with a battery like this. You have to put like batteries into a battery bank together. You could, however, pair it with a ultra capacitor and maybe this compared with this is going to be the ultimate combination. Maybe if you want to see that, I can do another video where I do pair these together and, and see what kind of potential we can build from that. There are several things that I can use this battery for around here, but none of them are very exciting. You know, I could connect it to a solar panel and an inverter in one of the campers, but it's going to be like watching paint dry on the wall. So. I'm out of ideas for today, and if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.